And the final thing is, um, again, pertains to all this. And you know, when we, when we talk about film finance, we call it a business plan. Um, and, and for the producer, it is the business plan. And uh, <laughs> this is the plan in general. You've got all this, you've got your script or your idea or your kind of life path, I guess would be another way to say it, uh, if you're not talking about a story in general. You have your pitch on you. I'm this guy, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm this gal, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a deep DOP. I'm sorry, out here they do call it DOP, I forgot. Um, I'm realistic about what I wanna do. Um, thank you, my friend, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I keep throwing pens at you, why do I do that? Um, I know the number I have to make to survive or the number I also want to make to, to succeed, to be really, you know, this is the, mo the money I want to make. And how am I going to do it? And when am I going to do it? And how am I going to make it happen, right? Um, you can, <clears throat> there's, the, you know, I'm big in, in, in the United States. There's a part in my book where I talk about the law of attraction. Do you know what the law of attraction is? Anybody lay that way? Anybody not know what the law of attraction is? Anybody afraid to raise their hand? <laughs> it's okay. Just because there may be one or two that don't know what it is, I'm going to throw it out there. Okay? The law of attraction is, is this belief that there's a law out there that whatever you think about, it, it, it becomes real. Thoughts become things. You know what I mean? And you know, when we had the, the talk before about the Kriya Yoga and Yogananda, the, my friends that are involved in that, and you know, they, 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 this has been around for a long time. You know what I mean? That thoughts become things. There's nothing new. There was a repackaged version of it called The Secret that was big, big, all over, man. Made $90 billion. It's the same thing. It's been going on thousands of years. People have been saying the same thing. Thoughts become things. Meaning, the friend that says, oh, I'm unlucky, man. I'm always unlucky. I have the worst luck. What happens? The worst luck. He has the worst luck because he's always, you know, he's always bringing that unluckiness to him or her, right? The person that says, I can do this. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an actor. You know, I'm a, I'm a fantastic actor, and says it to themselves, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, when I talked earlier on, now you're up there, wow, hey, <laughs> get some back angles, all right, hey. Um, when I talked to the front about the voice in your head, um, you can control that voice and program it, you know, and you can say, this is what I'm going to, I'm going to be a director, I'm going to be director, I'm going to be a, the best DP ever. And I mean, you may think, oh, that's funny. What no. I have some friends that are the best in the world at what they do. I mean, random stuff. One of my friends, I did a documentary on the guy that's the greatest bowler. You know, bowling out there? You have bowling out there? Um, that ever lived. Literally, the greatest that no one ever compared to this guy. And he, from the time he was born, he said he was going to be the best that ever lived. In his head, I'm going to be the best that ever lived. In his head, he said that, right? Another guy's a swing dancer guy. He says, but it's going to be the greatest. From the time he started, he didn't start until he was 19. But at 19 years old, he made the decision in his mind to say, I'm going to be the best that ever lived in the world. And I brought up a quote the other day from Charlie Chaplin. that he said, even when he was living homeless on the street, he didn't have enough money to buy bread. He knew he was the greatest actor in the world. You know? And guess what happened? You know? <laughs> See what happens from that. It, there's a friend of mine, that, uh, a guy named Dr. Rob Gilbert, who's a motivational speaker for corporations, speaks to these big corporations, gets them, you know, makes tons of money. And he says, why, is it, why aren't there millionaires everywhere, people successful everywhere? And he says, because people have big butts. Now, he doesn't mean their rear end. <laughs> you may go, oh, that's why, because their butt's fat? No. People have big butts, meaning the word butt. I'm going to be a doctor, but it's a lot of hard work means you'll never be a doctor, you know? I'm going to be a DP, a DOP, but I'm a girl, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, does he? It stops you. I'm going to be a, uh, I'm going to be in the film business, I'm going to be a director, but there's a lot of competition out there. You'll never be a director, okay? So all he said, he said, to be successful, all you need to do is change one word. You change the but to and. Okay, because the people that do what Brian and I do, it, man, we were just as scared as everybody else when we started, but we didn't let it stop us. I'm going to be in the film business, but I'm scared. No, no, no. I'm going to be in the film business and I'm scared. And it doesn't matter. I'm going to be a DP, but I'm a girl. No. I'm going to be a DP and I'm a girl, and I'm the best, and I can do it. I want to be a director, but there's a lot of competition out there. I'm going to be a director and there's a lot of competition out there, and I don't care because I'm going to be better than the other guy. So you change your butts to ants. Always remember to do that in your head. Whatever's stopping you. I mean, I've talked to corporations as well, and these guys are you know, way older than me. And I'm I want to start a new business, but I'm afraid I'm going to fail. 
How about you want to start a new business and you're afraid you're going to fail? Fine. It's okay to be afraid to fail. You know, I, I want to ride roller coasters, but I'm scared of roller coasters. <laughs> That's the reason I ride roller coasters. I love riding roller coasters because I'm scared. Because <laughs> I say I want to ride them and I'm scared. And I love them anyway, you know? So don't let butt stop you. If you have any butt in your life, I'm going to do this butt, get it out. I want to do this and. And I want to, um, you know, before I bring Brian up here to talk um, and, and answer some questions, I want to end on a, a story that I, I used. I started do, doing this story to actors as far as what it takes to, um, to succeed as an actor. And I realized that it's what it takes for anybody to succeed in any <laughs> profession, you know, whatever you're passionate about. Uh, story about this kid. Once upon a time, there was this, this kid who played the violin. He played it very well. And everybody said, you know, you're great. You, really, you should really do this as a uh, profession. You, you'd be one of the best. So what he did is he found out there was a master violinist playing on tour. So he went and he saw this master violinist called a virtuoso and afterwards went backstage and said, listen, you know, everybody, see, you're, you're the best in the world. Everybody tells me I'm really good. I want to play for you. And then uh, you tell me if I have what it takes to become a master like yourself. He says, okay, play. Kid plays. When he's done, the master violinist says, you're great. You have a lot of talent, skill, but you'll never be a master because you don't have the fire. And the kid says, okay. Holds in the tears, goes home, puts the violin in the closet, closes the door, never plays again. About 20 years go by and the guy's done well. You know, maybe he's in construction. He's, you know, done okay in his job. And he finds out this master violinist is now 90 years old and still playing the violin, still touring in concerts. So he goes to see him. And afterwards he goes backstage and he says, uh, hey man, you know, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the construction business because of you. And the master violinist is like, how is that? And he says, well, 20 years ago, I played for you and I, you know, you evaluated me and you said I, I could never be a master because I didn't have the fire. And the violin says, oh, okay, all right, yeah, maybe, yeah, I remember you. And the kid says, you know, I just had a question, though. <laughs> when you heard me play, how did, you, how did you know that I didn't have the fire? And the master says, I didn't. And the kid says, oh, my god. I, 20 years ago, I, I had the violin. You didn't, you didn't even know. I, I, I played it for you. You said I didn't have the fire. I went home. I, I cried. I put the, the violin in the closet. I never played again. I gave up my dream because I listened to you. And the master says, well, that's just it. He says, I told you you didn't have the fire, and you listened to me. If you really had the fire, what I said would have made no difference to you. And it's like, man, every time I tell that story, for some reason it gives me a chills, because I know I have it, and you need to have it too. If I was, I used to do plays in high school and elementary school and stuff like that. And if at that time, who's, the, who's the, think of a best actor, Robert De Niro, right, or somebody like that. If Robert De Niro came and saw me in one of those plays <laughs> back then and said, kid, you know, you don't, you, don't, you don't got it. I swear on my life, my little voice would have said, wow, he's one of the best actors in the world and he has no idea how good I am. I mean, he's a really bad judge of talent. I would have said that I know it. I know it because I have the fire. And now I work in a film business and we've done very well. And you need that same fire too. You need to have that passion and you can do it. You can program that voice in your head, and you can succeed in whatever you want to do. Thank you. All right.